New Jersey, New Jersey now joins six other states that have made a similar long-term investment in their workforce by requiring workers be paid a fair wage commensurate with our state's cost of living. Today's increase gives low-wage workers and their families ec firmer economic ground to stand on while giving the state's 20, 267,000 businesses the time they need to adjust to higher wage requirements. Through this action, Governor Murphy, our legislature, countless advocates, some of whom are here today, and New Jersey's business leaders have improved the standard of living for New Jersey workers and have reaffirmed our state's commitment to the dignity of work. Dignity comes when a worker doesn't need to fear for his or her safety at the start of each workday. Dignity comes when all workers, regardless of their gender, national origin, immigration status, or any other factor for that matter, are afforded the same rights in the workplace as everyone else. And dignity comes when workers are paid a living wage for a day's work. During this still young Murphy administration, New Jersey is leading the way for workers' dignity. We have seen unprecedented passage of laws to improve the lives of working families. The governor has signed the Equal Pay Act, paid sick leave, supported career pathways through apprenticeship, a significant expansion of disability and family leave programs, and of course, an increased minimum wage. New Jersey is leading the way. For proactive actions like these, actions that take on a complex bureaucracy to do what is right for New Jersey workers, it takes a village and it takes the commitment and passion of some of the folks here today who have been fighting for so long to lift up their communities. Moving to a $15 an hour minimum wage from pipe dream to law can be attributed to strong leadership from our governor who made worker fairness an essential piece of this administration's goal of a stronger and fairer economy for New Jerseyans, but also the steadfast efforts of Senate President Steve Sweeney, all the other senators, like Senator Nellie Poe is now here, Assembly Speaker Craig Coughlin, who hashed out compromises and posted the bill for votes. We sincerely thank our governor and our legislature for working together on the right side of history to raise the wage. We haven't been as successful with a federal minimum wage bill increase yet, uh, but legislation is making its way through the House, raising the wage from $7.25 to $15 an hour by 2024, when New Jersey will be at $15 an hour. Uh, New Jersey's Democratic congressional delegation has been openly and vocally supportive of this action, and we'll hear more from Congressman Pascrell later. Think about how much life better, better life would be for all American workers that if the federal wage was lifted to $15 an hour, and a real path to the middle class was created for all workers. The economic reality is that our businesses would benefit too. Study after study has shown that when workers have more money in their pockets, they spend more. I have no doubt that lifting up workers lifts us all. That's especially true if you look at the profile of the average minimum wage worker. Contrary to the popular misconception, the typical minimum wage worker is not a teenager working part-time who lives at home. It's a 36-year-old adult who may have a child or two and is responsible for more than half of their family's income. That is who we are looking out for, those residents who are already working hard, simply trying to eke out an income. Our department is tasked with enforcing wage and hour laws here in New Jersey, and we will continue to look out for every worker, ensuring they are taking home every single penny that they have earned. So again, thank you to Governor Murphy, our legislature, advocates, and most importantly, our indispensable business community for putting New Jersey on the right path. Together, we're leading the way to a stronger, fairer economy for all New Jerseyans. With that, I'd like to introduce uh, a great speaker we're going to have today, who will be directly benefiting from our minimum wage increase, Anna Ramirez. Yeah. Hola, buenos días a todos. ¿Cómo estamos? Bien. Good morning. Bien. How are we? Bien. Gracias a Dios. <laughs> Mi nombre es Ana Ramirez. Soy miembro de Se Hace Camino en Nueva Jersey. My name is Ana Ramirez. I'm a, make, a member of Make Throw New Jersey. Soy madre y abuela de tres nietos. Tengo tres nietos. Muy orgullosa. Soy trabajadora. Trabajo en una fábrica en Pasey, New Jersey por 18 años. I'm a mom, I'm a grandmother, I'm a very proud grandmother of three grandkids, and I've worked at a factory in Passaic for the past 18 years. Pero el sueldo que gano es, bueno, que ganamos todos es muy poco para pagar los biles, ya que tiene uno que decidir entre la renta o las medicinas. But the wage I was earning was just too little. I had to decide between buying medicine or paying my rent and bills. Cuando uno paga la renta, la nevera es Triste decirlo, pero es la verdad que se queda vacía a veces solo con huevos y leche lo más necesario. After paying my rent, my refrigerator would be basically empty except for milk and some eggs. Pero ahora estoy muy contenta porque con este salario podré cubrir mis biles, ayudar más a mi familia, cubrir mis necesidades. 
but I'm very happy to say with this salary now, with this minimum wage, I'll be able to cover my bills and to help my family. Quiero darle las gracias también al gobernador y a todo el concilio, a todo el comisionador por hacer esto posible de que ahora estoy muy feliz porque empezamos el camino paso a paso a 15 dólares. Estoy muy feliz y emocionada. I want to thank the governor, I want to thank the state legislature and the commissioner of labor um, for standing up. I am so happy that we are beginning this path to a $15 minimum wage. Y muchas gracias a todos también los que lucharon para que todo esto fuera posible. Un millón de gracias. Estoy muy feliz. And a million thanks to everyone that fought to make this happen. I'm very happy. Thank you, Anna. Uh, and the other great news is that in six months, it's going to go up a dollar again to $11 yes. an hour, which is really exciting as well. Uh, next, I want to introduce Fiona Joseph, uh, who's a great advocate, who's been working hard to pass an increase in minimum wage here in New Jersey. Uh, and now she's uh, on her way somewhere else later this summer. She can tell you about that. But thank you for being here, uh, Fiona. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Fiona Joseph. I've just graduated high school, and I live in Elizabeth, New Jersey. I've worked all throughout high school at a movie theater in Jersey Gardens in Elizabeth. I made minimum wage at eight, 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 85 an hour. And a lot of people think that young people work just to buy clothes and makeup. But that's not true. Mm. My wages go to help my family, to help pay phone bills and put food on the table. And I'm saving for college. <laughs> this fall, I'll be one of the first few people in my family to attend college. I need to save for books, tuition, and more. So today's increase in the minimum wage will help make my earnings go a little further. I'll be able to afford another book, another phone bill, and act as an emergency fund for my family. This win today was hard fought. With workers and teens across the state, I collected thousands of petition signatures, organized rallies, and marches. And we won. I want to recognize the work of all the working people in our state who, worked, who fought so hard to make today happen. And I also want to thank Governor Murphy for fighting to include teen workers in the minimum wage hike, the state legislature, and Commissioner Rob Angelo for, and for his leadership. Yes, we can! Uh, we're very proud to be joined this morning. Uh, in politics, you always say the people that know who, where, the, where the rubber hits the road are the mayors. Uh, I'm very proud to uh, call this mayor a friend, even though we don't root for any of the same sports teams. Uh, <laughs> but I'm glad that Mayor Andre Say is here this morning. Thank you. Thank president. you. We're not talking about the Mets today, okay? <laughs> Nevertheless, Commissioner Angel, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. You start off by saying you felt like you were in a classroom. So I have a question for anybody, for everyone. Does anyone know when the first minimum wage was established in the United States? I knew I'd hear crickets. <laughs> That's right, Congressman, 1938. <laughs> Do you know how much the first minimum wage was set at? That's right, Congressman, 25 cents. So we're talking about 81 years, and we're still fighting. We're not keeping up with the times, and people are suffering as a result. And to put it in proper perspective or further perspective, Fiona, thank you. I can relate to you because when I was your age, which was a while ago, I worked at Burger King from 1991 to 1994. I made $5.25. So we're talking about 20 plus years, 27 years or so since 91, actually 28 years. And the minimum wage has not gone up that much. This is a fight for fairness. Right. I hear horror stories from my constituents on making decisions. Difficult decisions. You've heard earlier, can we eat? And where are we going to live? I've heard people living in their cars and relying on the kindness of others for simple necessities, like a shower. I've heard people will shower at Dunkin' Donuts because they can't afford their own home. So this is a fight for fairness. This is a fight for 15. You've got to keep pushing ahead. It's like the fight in Phil's. <laughs> so we'll get there. And yes, we can. Yes, we will. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, very fortunate this morning to be joined by somebody who I've been uh, in the trenches with uh, for a long time and somebody yes. who's a real leader uh, in New Jersey for fairness, for equity, and for lifting up our communities across this state, not just in our own district. Right. Senator Nelly Poe. You gotta beat up the mayor. <laughs> good morning, hey. good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mayor. Yes, good morning. Good morning, Congressman, Commissioner. Thank you so very much for being here in our very own district. And good morning to you yes. all, really. Thank you, thank you so much. But good morning to everyone here. I know that uh, Yvette Rowland from uh, my colleague's office, uh, Assemblyman uh, Benji Wimberly's chief of staff is here, so I just want to recognize uh, her for being here. Uh, good morning, everyone, as I've mentioned. This, as you've already heard, there's, th this is a very historic day for all of us, and especially in here in New Jersey, and I am very proud to be here standing with everyone today as we take our first broad step towards a $15 minimum wage, as you've already heard from some of the earlier speakers. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate everyone who helped and uh, helped us to get to this point. It's already been noted, but I think it's worth mentioning again the incredible opportunity that it took for all of us to come together and be able to do that. I want to thank uh, the members of my, uh, uh, in, of, in the legislature, my colleagues, uh, particularly the leadership. It's as the commissioner mentioned, uh, Senator President Sweeney and Speaker Coughlin in the assembly for their leadership. I want to also thank the governor for his support and effort to deliver us the law we now have today because of his support as well. We have a more progressive law th uh, than any side had originally proposed, and that's a good thing. And a law that gives New Jersey workers, as you've heard, the living wage they deserve without costing them the jobs in which they depend upon. Raising the wage will, only, will not only help our families make enough money to put food on the table, pay the utility bills, buy shoes, clothes, pay for some of the phone bills, uh, save for college as it's already been mentioned, but making sure that they're able to keep a roof over their heads. Putting money away in the hands of people who really need it means that we, they will spend it and help to generate the economic growth throughout the state. It's estimated that for every $1 increase in the minimum wage, there is a $1.35 increase in, in cons, uh, consumer spending. That is what's really going to change our economic opportunity all throughout the state of New Jersey. This legislation will not only be good for the families of New Jersey, but the communities in which they live in as well. Again, I'm very grateful, Commissioner, for, uh, uh, for you being here, for all the advocates, for the, all of the um, organizations that took place. Thank you so very much for hosting us. This is wonderful. Um, uh, thank you for, uh, again uh, for this great effort. I know that he's having a pretty <laughs> tough time over right. there. I I'm want to back. make sure that you are able to get the space that you need. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again right. for being here. God bless thank you. you. Thank you. And you finished that very timely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I've been in, uh, working for government for a while now, uh, and sometimes you think of what government is. It's something that's sort of far away. It's either in Trenton or Washington in some big building. Uh, you know, you see the budget fights and shutdowns and threats of shutdown and some new bill passed. But what does it mean to you as an individual? Uh, our next speaker is somebody who every single day is fighting to make sure that our federal government, the uh, agencies it funds, uh, the the bills that it passes and the laws that it regulates are being done to, to benefit the most people, not only in his district, but in the country. He has a great passion for making sure that people are being touched by their government in a positive way. And I think there's no better example than raising someone's wage uh, through government intervention. And I couldn't be prouder to call uh, Congressman Pascal a friend, uh, a mentor, 
and quite frankly, inspiration to me and so many of my colleagues about fighting for workers in New Jersey. Congressman Bill Pascrell. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Our great commissioner. This is uh, a big deal today. Uh, this is something very important and close to my heart, the minimum wage. I started working uh, when I was nine, and then uh, I graduated uh, when I was 17 to work my way through college. I worked in an A&P food store. And uh, like everything I've ever stepped into, uh, I had to cause trouble. <laughs> and so we started a part-timers union. And the manager of the store got the, the president of the Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company come to Patterson, sit me down uh, in the back room of uh, where the vegetables were, and said, are you crazy? <laughs> And the next deal that the Meat Cutters Union that represented the workers at the Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, the AMP, right over there on Buffalo Avenue, if you remember, mm -hmm. Delaware Ave, uh, we had a deal where we had the first part-time union in the whole country. And my dear friend, my dear friend who was the president of the regular union, Ray Randall passed away a few months ago, was a great, great labor leader, a great humanitarian in his own right. We forget those people who chopped down the trees to get things done. And uh, we worked together. Our first meeting was on Lackawanna Plaza here in Patterson. And Ray Randall said, well, you know, there was about 500 people there. And we were part-timers, we didn't, we didn't know what we were getting into. But Ray Rando said to me, you're gonna have to stand up on the stage and give a speech, you know. And I said, that's the last thing I wanted to do when I get here tonight. I said a few words, and the Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company came into the 20th century. That was a long time ago. And I committed myself to the minimum wage. It's been a tough fight. So I want to thank the commissioner for coming here and doing and speaking in Patterson. You're doing a terrific job. And say, say hello to Sarah for me. She used to work for us. Uh, our mayor, of course, is always at the forefront for compassion and, more important, to get things done. You know, I've heard so much talk about the minimum wage. We need action. The state performed better than the federal government. So we got it in the state. And it's going to be a gradual thing. So this is a, an historic day. To our leaders in the state legislature, I want to thank Nellie Poe. Well, I've been thanking you a lot, Nellie. <laughs> I want to thank Benji Wembley, my, my buddy, and Shavonda Sumter. They've done a fantastic job for the good things. We are taking a big step today. It took a long time towards ensuring workers in our state are receiving a living wage. Because the wage that exists now, and by the way, this is my new campaign manager. All right. <laughs> And she's saying, and what's your first name? Fiona. 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 She's thinking, hell, I'm going to run for Congress. <laughs> <laughs> we take a big step. So if you add up what you get at the end of the year, if you're taking the present minimum wage, you can't live on it. It's not a living wage. Mm. It's not a living wage. And all of you know what I'm talking about. We don't have to have an encyclopedic definition of it. We know the plight of working men and women. You know, in the 70s, 
Ninety percent of the profit that a corporation made went back into the corporation. You know what that is today? All the way down below 50%. In fact, all they're interested in many times is buying shares into the company, making their pocketbooks fatter, and, you know, the workers have to wait. When you take a look at comparison, we have a wheelbarrow, a wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow of information that we need to learn because if we could do this on the living wage in New Jersey, we could do it throughout the country. We know the plight of working men and women in this nation. They're getting squeezed more and more. Tens of thousands of workers in our state are working 40 hours or more a week, but still can't make ends meet. Across America, millions work hard and are barely above water, if not under. We can't tolerate this. It's shameful. Think about it. Works to workers today who make the federal minimum wage have less buying power than a similar worker in the late 60s. Think about what I just said less buying power than a similar worker in the end of the 1960s. How any congressman can turn their backs on that fact is beyond my knowledge. A dollar in a worker's pocket is worth 15 percent less due to inflation since we last increased the federal wage which was, I think, uh, Rob, 2009. It is a national outrage that a full-time worker making the minimum wage cannot afford basic life essentials. That is not hyperbole. That is not an exaggeration. That is the truth. How can a congressman turn his back on that truth and look for reasons not to pass legislation on a federal level. How? Tell me. It's beyond my comprehension. In Congress, we've been blocked for years. But here in New Jersey, under Governor Murphy, we're acting now. So we're going to get a raise to $10 an hour from 885, and then we'll go up to 2025. 2024 15. to 15 dollars and the way you graduated it is good so that the smaller businesses are not going to get hurt right. we do this on a gradual basis nobody's going to get hurt so a buck 15 may not seem like a lot but i know it'll make a world of difference to workers across this state and eventually that number will go to 15 bucks we're doing it the right way this isn't being forced through to shock the system. This needed change is being introduced on a gradual level. Small and seasonal businesses will have the time they need to prepare. So there are exceptions, there are qualifications. They did it the right way. So I commend my colleagues in Trenton. In Washington, I know it's no easy task. I've been fighting on a federal level. I have not succeeded. We're going to succeed. Because I will never, not for one day, accept a federal minimum wage at a pittance level. 725 is an international disgrace. That is why I'm an original sponsor of the Raise the Wage Act, which is H.R. 582. Like New Jersey legislators, like that legislation in New Jersey, this bill would also gradually raise the federal minimum wage by a buck thirty from eight twenty five to eight fifty five this year, and eventually this increase rises to fifteen dollars in twenty twenty four. Then the minimum minimum wage would be indexed to inflation 
I'd like that in the federal legislation. So workers do not have to always rely on politicians to get to their fannies and families and give them a raise. <laughs> Our legislation would help stimulate the economy. It is estimated that a 10% increase in the minimum wage would increase sales by around $2 billion each year. You know, it's, it's like what they say about immigrants that come into this country. They are a great asset to the economy, a great asset. And most of them pay taxes into the economy. If we didn't have the amount of immigration, I, let's just talk about legal immigration. Over the last 15 years, the Social Security system would be in trouble today instead of within 12 years, 14 years. And that's why we need to act on Social Security today. We have that legislation, too. This new demand helps create an economy that works for everybody. This bill would help everyone. It helps tipped workers by raising their wage from $2.13 an hour to $3.60 this year. And that hasn't changed since 1996. It helps youth workers by raising the wage from $4.25 to $5.50 in this year. We've almost treated workers like chattel. We've almost treated workers in this country as second-class citizens. And we have almost treated those workers like you would be treated in Russia and China and Vietnam and many of the Central American countries around the world, in, in this continent, in this hemisphere. It helps women because they make nearly two-thirds of all, they are two-thirds of all minimum wage workers, women. And usually those women have other jobs to make ends meet. You know, it's nice, it's nice to read books about this. <laughs> and it's nice to pontificate about it. I've lived, I lived in Patterson all my life. I don't have to go to the Library of Congress. I see people every day that I'm in town. I talk to them. These are the people who matter, the people who power America and the deserve what I call the dignity of a living wage. I will keep fighting. I want to see workers across the country get a raise like those are getting today in New Jersey. They sure as hell deserve it. I'm honored to be here today. I think the state has provided us with a good system. Uh, there will be an increase. It's coming our way. It's going to add up by the time 1924 comes around. And on the federal level, we're going to attach it to the rising cost of living, like we should be doing to Social Security every year. It's part of our bill as well on Social Security. Thank you for having me here, Rob. Thank you. I hope I've added and not subtracted from this <laughs> great discussion. You know you can count on me. Lauren, thank you for opening up your door for us today. I deeply appreciate it. Murphy. Lauren Murphy. See, Lauren's, Lauren Murphy's picture is never in the front of the page, the newspaper. But she's done more to help people than anybody I know uh, in this county. Does her job daily, as do many workers. You know, these, these are workers. You know, public workers, as the governor said, are treated like third-class citizens, not second-class citizens. Because you work for the government, all kinds of adjectives are provided. What are we doing for government workers? We finally woke up a little bit, and then went back into a long siesta. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> but you want to know something? I've been through this. I was the mayor of Patterson, New Jersey, this proud city, and I was proud of that. And you know what? 
you keep going. You keep going and try to make it better. Thank you and thank you. Gracias. Whoa. I said it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, from one proud government worker to another. Thank you, Senator Poe. Thank you, Mayor Saya. Thank you, our workers, for being here. I go and take any questions now, if any questions from the press. Great, we laid it all out. That's my, my strategy for Senate testimony also. Say everything in the beginning so there's no questions. Thank you for being here today, and tell everybody you know minimum wage went up by a dollar today. Thank you. Yes.